So circle equations are kind of cool things. Uh, they're based on the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, I don't know if you, you had this last year. Um, last year, I know I mentioned this with my classes. You may not remember. A conic section. You know what a conic section is? Uh, if you picture like two ice cream cones, kind of point to point. Right? Those are like two cones. A conic section is a cut through this. And uh, last year, we spent some time uh, well, you did a cut this way, and you've got something that looked like that, parabola, right? Um, this time, we're looking at another conic section. If you were to go straight across looking down at a cone, you get this circle. Uh, you will, probably not next year, the year after, learn about other things. If you kind of do a sideways um, sort of cut, you get an ellipse. You can also kind of cut through two of them, and you get what's called a parabola. So uh, this is kind of the beginning of really looking at conic sections. Uh, as you might when you get into your pre-calculus classes. So you're cutting a cone such that you get a circle. And uh, the way it works is if you, I have a circle centered on uh, point zero, zero, <coughs> here on the origin. And here's x, y. So the x, y's, all those pairs have to make an equation true. I want all those sets of points. Uh, is this a function? Is this a function? What's a function? It's not a function. Why not? Right? To be a function, every x value has one and only one y value. So here's an x value. Look, it has a y value here. It has a y value here. It's not a function. So uh, these particular equations are not functions. But that's OK. There's something else. They're going to give you a circle. And one way to figure out what your xy pair is, is when you pick an xy, kind of complete a little right triangle here. Here's your radius. So the x value is here. The y value is here. By the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? And that is the equation of a circle centered at the origin. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, that's pretty easy. Isn't it? So if I'm looking at a circle here on a coordinate plane, and I want to write its equation, it is centered at the origin. So it's going to be x squared plus y squared is r squared. Um, first thing I need to do is figure out, though, what's the radius? Three, yeah, we're counting boxes. Right? Here's the center. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Now, you could pick this point, I guess, if you wanted to, and use the distance formula. But your r will be 3. So then what's the equation of this circle? Not your question. It's as simple as it seems. Yeah, Thomas, what is it? If x squared plus y squared is r squared, and r is 3, then what's the equation of this circle? Well, where does the 9 go? The r is the 3, right? So that becomes 3 squared. So what's the equation? Yeah? Well, remember, x and y, they don't change, right? For every x, y pair, this will be true. So if I do x squared plus y squared for all those points, what am I going to get? Plus? Yeah. Right? For any x, y pair, pick any x, y pair. The, the x squared plus the y squared, you will get 9 for any of the points on this circle because the radius is always three. And you can always do a little Pythagorean theorem drop. So x squared plus y squared is nine. That easy? It was too easy. You guys were like, well, you're yeah, thinking too hard. That's it. If you know r, when you're centered on the origin, x squared plus y squared is that radius value squared. Uh, the next logical question would be, though, what if you're not at the origin? What happens then? So uh, let's take a look here. Um, we're going to be using the distance formula. So, so let's see what's happening here. Because I'm going to do the same thing. This squared plus that squared is r squared, correct? This value squared plus that value squared equals r squared. But what is that value? If I call my center h comma k, which this is very much what we call our potentials when we're working with conic sections, h comma k. Okay. So, what is this value? I go from h and I go to x. Well, let's give them numbers. Let's pretend x is 6. And let's pretend h was 2. What's this value from here to here? Right? If that's 2 and that's 6, what's this 
value, four. How do you get there? You subtract, right? So this value over here is x minus h. And then let's think about the y's. Again, let's give them values. If this y is 10 and this y is 4, let's say that's 10 and that's 4. So what's this distance here? What's the value? It's 6. You subtract it. So this one will be y minus k. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be this thing squared plus this thing squared is r squared. So x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the generalized standard form of each circle where h comma k is the center. So when I said we're centered at the origin, think what happens to h comma k. h would be 0 and k would be 0. x squared plus y squared is r squared. So it is the same equation. It's just when they're, you know, when you're at 0, 0, you don't see it. Um, I don't know what you said. I forgot. Questions? This is really, really, really important. This should be on your paper on the front in a box. Uh, you know, put little stars and things on it. Right? This is the important bit that you need to remember. You will see equations that look like this for almost all of the uh, comic sections. Okay. So here it is. So let's do an example. This is in the middle of page one. I want to write the standard equation. This, this is the standard equation. X minus h squared plus y minus b squared is r squared. Where the center is, the, is negative 2, 5 and radius is 7. So for now, I'm writing out the whole thing while we're still kind of getting familiar with this. So x minus, well, this is h comma k. Right here. So h is negative 2, and I'm subtracting a negative 2. We do have to be careful here. These are subtracts. So what's a minus minus 2? Plus 2. And then y minus k is 5 squared. What's my radius? It's 7, right? So square that. So x plus 2 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 49. That is the equation of that circle with the center of negative 2, 5, and radius 7. I, I mean, I think it's pretty simple. You're just doing those substitutions. Let's try another one. Okay, this is example B. The point negative 5, 6 is on a circle with center of negative 1, 3. So here's my center. You want to make sure, because, you know, they'll give you more than one point. So I'm just making sure I'm, I'm remembering that. So that's each one. Write the equation. Now, they have not given me the radius. Let's just think about what's actually happening here. At negative 1, 3, somewhere over here, I have center. And then there's point negative 5, 6. That's on the circle somewhere, right? So here's my radius from center negative 1, 3 to negative 5, 6. How will I find the length of this radius? Very interesting. I can just use the distance formula between the radius and any point on the circle to get the radius. So, um, actually, uh, well, let's do radius. So radius is the square root of, I'm using distance formula. What's the distance between negative 5 and negative 1? How many miles between negative 1 and 4, right? And then I square it. Plus, what's the distance between 6 and 3? And I square it. And so that's the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. 16 plus 9 is 25. 5. So I guess r is 5. So now I'm back to this part here where it says uh, find the equation. So x minus h. Well, my h again is negative, so it's going to be x plus 1. A minus minus 1 plus y minus 3 squared equals this thing squared. So you know what? When I was doing this, I really didn't need to take the square root. Why not just find r squared? And you can save yourself a step there. Because if you just find r squared, it's 4 squared plus d squared. Without taking the, um, the square root, you kind of get your r squared more directly. Not wrong if you go this route. But if you just want you know, the equation, I want r squared. So I, I can get that without taking the square root. But again, uh, questions on that. What do you think? Uh, we have no opinion. Okay. All right, how do you graph this? Well, 
I've got this equation, x minus 4 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared equals 36. So first things first, what is the center of this circle? And I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to put this guy up so we know what we're looking at. We haven't quite memorized that yet properly. So what's h? Uh, what's k? Negative 2. Remember, the subtraction, to have this be a plus, I must have been subtracting negative 2. So my center is 4, negative 2. Be careful, right? Because you are subtracting. It feels opposite. That's not. Okay, so determine the center. So I'm going to put the center on my graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. There's the center of the circle. Now let's find the radius. What is the radius of my circle here? Why do you say 6? 6 is 36 squared. Well, r squared, right, is 36. So the radius must be 6. And I'm, I'm projecting the negative value. I can't find the negative value. So what do I do with that? You basically, you, you draw that point in the center. I know it's a radius 6. This is easy to do horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Oh, you lost count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now going this way, it's a little hard, right? So basically, put in, you're sketching your graph. You're sketching the circle. I kind of know, and now I'm just freehanding it. And now, compass, you can use that. I'm not going to do a great job freehanding. This little board is not going to work a little bit. But I'm, it's okay to kind of freehand the rest of it when you're doing it, or you can use a compass if you, you kind of like it. But if you just kind of anchor it. I, I kind of know where it's going to be. So again, it's not the best drawing here. I mean, it should be a little bit more like that. But that's how you craft it. Easy enough, right? Right zone is fine. Okay. Questions so far? Excellent. So here's a little example of kind of playing with uh, graphing circles. We're going to go up this a little bit. So you've got three forest ranger stations on this grid of some forest. So forest station A, that's at negative 3, 2. So let's mark it on the graph. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Here's where forest station A is. Uh, forest ranger station B is at 2, 2. And I'm, I'm using one, um, one square for one mile to make it a little easier. So that looks like 3. And then C, uh, negative 1 and 1.5, one really? Okay. Uh, uh, negative 1, negative 1.5. So those are where the ranger stations are on my grid. Now they're telling me a fire is two miles from A. Well, two miles from A could be here, could be here, could be here. It could be any of these locations two miles away. So you basically want uh, all the points that are two miles away from a certain point. That's a circle. A circle with radius two. You kind of uh, put that in there. Uh, it's three miles from B. All right, well, let me make a, a, a circle with radius three. Okay, I'm doing the best here, but I don't have my compass. And I also know, whoops, I also know it's three and a half miles from C. Well, this is already a half. And then one, two, three, there's one of the points. This is a half, one, two, three. I'm going to do my best guess here. One, two, three and a half, and one, two, three and a half, and kind of make that circle as best as I can. So I've kind of drawn the situation, right? I'm now representing the fire two miles from A, three miles from B, three and a half miles from C. Where is this fire? Right? It has to be where there, all those points are intersecting. This is the only point. That is, two miles from A and three miles from B and three and a half miles from C. So where do they intersect? Over here at negative one, two? And does that make sense? Yes, sir? I, I probably don't. I'm trying to get it. Yeah, yeah. Just saying that it's two miles from A and three miles from B would only be this point anyway. But they gave me three, so I'm using three. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so here's where our warm-up comes into play, completing the square. 
this review should be easy now because we've been through this. So this one's not on your paper, so we're just looking up at the board. So if you've got x, x squared plus 6x plus c, and I want a perfect square trinomial, what should c be? Yeah, Moss? Nine. Tell me how. Right, that's three. And then you do three squared. That's how we get nine. So it's really x squared plus 6x plus nine. Moss, how would I write that as its binomial square? x plus 3 squared. Well, x plus 3 times x plus 3. We do x squared plus 6x plus 9. Great. So I'm just writing the steps down. Uh, you find your constancy, take half of this and square it. And then your binomial square will be x plus 3, this thing here, squared. Um, so a little practice here. Go ahead and practice that. Just do them. See how fast? I want the c. I want what makes it a perfect square trinomial. And I want the actual binomial square. I want both things. The third one might be slightly trickier. It's a little harder when B isn't an even number, but just follow the same rules. Put up what I got. I'm hoping, I'm hoping A and B were, were fairly easy. Any questions A and B? Are we able to get through those? They still be working on it, which is a little too. Uh, this one, it's an odd number. Please keep them fractions. It's easier if they're fractions because uh, half of 5 is just 5 halves. Square that, we get 25 fourths. Uh, I don't need to make this 2.5 and figure out what 2.5 squared is. Just put that there, and then it's x plus 5 halves squared. I think it's easier to keep me in fraction. What are your questions on this? You're good? Great news. OK. So writing the equation of a circle. Write the equation of a circle and find the center and radius. This circle, that's an equation of a circle right here. It's not that nice standard form. It does not look like x minus h squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. And we're on site two. I would put this, this little formula, put it on top of your paper, just so you can see it. We're, we're still kind of learning it. x minus h squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Then you don't flip. So you just put it on top of the uh, page two. So what are we going to do? i got a big story here. I'm just going to tell you what to do here. You basically put all the x terms together. Then you're going to put all the y terms together. And I'm going to move the constant over to the other side. So what does that mean? I'm going to write x squared minus 10x, leave a space, plus y squared plus 8y, leave a space, equals, I'm going to add 8. So all I've done so far is I've just kind of used the commutative property of addition to kind of regroup the x's and the y's to together, and the addition property of equality to move uh, that guy over the side. And if you're following me, hopefully you are. This is that first example uh, right under where it says write the equation of the circle by the center. Uh, we all know where we are. We're writing the notes there. Okay. What you're going to do is complete the square twice. So we'll start with the x's. x squared minus 10x. Oh, take half of it and square it. What goes here? 25. Now this is an equation, right? You just added 25 to the left. Let's add 25 to the right to keep my equation in balance. We're going to uh, do this again. Now with the y's. y squared plus 8y. I want to complete the square. Take half of it and square it. 16. Added 16 to the equation. I better add it uh, on both sides. So far so good? Now I'm going to take this guy and say, now it's a perfect square trinomial. What's the uh, binomial square that goes with that? Yes, sir, Christian? X minus 5 squared. <laughs> what about this one? Y plus 4 squared. What's 8 plus 25 plus 16? Wait, yes, 49. Look, look, look. To me, this is awesome. It's in this form now. It's X minus H squared plus y minus v squared equals r squared. What's the center? Negative 5. 5, negative 4. That's x minus h, y minus k. That must have been a minus negative 4. That's what I got my plus. And what's the radius? Wow, come on, that's pretty cool. I gotta admit, I mean, I don't things cool. That's cool. It's very cool. Come on, give, give me some. Okay. I think that's cool. 
So uh, now, just for that, you get to do one all by yourself. Figure this out. Do the same thing. Group those X's together. Group those Y's together. Complete the square. Remembering if you add something on this side, you add it to the other. Write it as the binomial square. Go. Do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just putting it up for answers. I'm going to give you some time to work on it. Placing it back to where you 